what if, what if we consider the opposite experiment, where we change payment, but make no changes in terms of delivery? Well, we have an interesting uh, example of that in the United States, the nursing home value-based purchasing demonstration, or the NHVBP. I was one of the evaluators for this federal demonstration. It was very interesting. It's, it's basically a nursing home pay for performance innovation. And although it changes payment incentives, incentives it makes no changes in terms of how care can be delivered on the ground. It simply expects you know, nursing homes to uh, respond to these in fi financial incentives and improve performance. But unlike the telemedicine or, or interact toolkit examples where we have very direct uh, delivery innovations, with the NHVBP, it was completely open to the facilities on how they wanted to improve performance. So let me tell you a little bit more about the, uh, about the demonstration. It was a voluntary demonstration that ran between 2009 and 2012 in three U.S. states, Arizona, New York, and Wisconsin. And the states volunteered, and then the nursing homes within those states uh, volunteered as well. You can see 38 facilities in Arizona, 72 in New York, and 61 in Wisconsin. And in New York, we were actually able to randomize, so we had uh, 71 facilities that, that didn't receive the intervention. In Arizona and Wisconsin, due to smaller states and, and lower numbers of participating facilities, we had to do a match control uh, group. So performance was scored along both improvement in, 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 in performance over time and absolute levels of performance. And it was scored along four domains, uh, nursing home staffing, both in terms of levels of staffing, RN, LPNs, and nurse aides, and in terms of staffing turnover. Facilities were also scored in terms of uh, survey inspections or deficiencies. These are annual inspections that, uh, that occur for every uh, certified facility in the United States. We had different minimum data set based quality measures like functioning improvement or pressure ulcers. And then finally, we had potentially avoidable rates of hospitalizations. And those top performing facilities, those in the top two deciles, the top 20% of nursing homes, were scheduled to receive a reward payment, but only if the treatment groups in each of these states showed savings relative to the control facilities. So the US government wanted this to be budget neutral and they would only pay those top performing nursing homes if they generated savings um, as, as part of the demonstration. So what happened here? Once again, facilities were given this payment incentive. You're in the top 20% and you collectively show savings and you're, you, you score the best in terms of improvement and absolute performance in terms of these different domains, you get a reward payment. You can, you can respond to this in any way you see fit. We're just gonna give you these broad payment incentives. What happened? Well, it turns out not much in the way of quality. Uh, there was little pre-post change in performance across those treatment and control nursing homes. So facilities generally didn't change their staffing or their number of survey violations or their minimum data set based quality measures uh, or, or their rate of potentially avoidable hospitalizations. The results on savings, however, were a little bit more mixed. And I'll show those on the next slide, but I did want to highlight that if you're, more inter if you're interested further in reading about this uh, evaluation, our final the URL for our final report is there at the bottom of the screen. So what happened in terms of Medicare savings? Remember, there has to be Medicare savings for there to be a payout to those best performing nursing homes. And so this is by year and by state. You can see that in year one, two of the three states generated savings. The savings were relatively modest in Arizona, and they were actually relatively large in Wisconsin. So the best performers in those two states got a payout there was no savings in New York and hence no payout. In year two, modest savings in Wisconsin led to a, to a modest payout to those best performing facilities. By year three, no savings in any of the states and so no payout. So what do we do with these very kind of mixed results? Was there actually a true response to the NHVBP among those participating providers in terms of generating savings? Well, in order to push at this issue, we went out as part of our evaluation and talked to a lot of the participating nursing homes. And we learned a lot in those, those interviews. The first sign that we, we weren't gonna see much of an effect in terms of performance was in the first year of the demonstration, 
we went out and we, we talked to some of the participating nursing homes and said, you know, we're from the nursing home value-based purchasing uh, demonstration evaluation. Um, you're part of this demonstration. Um, what's been your experience and what, what, are you, what are you doing as part of this, uh, part of the NHVBP? The question we got back from a lot of the participating nursing homes was, what's the NHVBP? It turns out a lot of the participating providers were working on quality across a number of different domains. And really, with all the turnover that happens in leadership and administration at these facilities, they really weren't, uh, weren't focused on the NHVBP. This was the first sign we weren't going to see an effect. If you don't even know you're in the demonstration, it's hard to think you're, you're responding to the demonstration. The second indication was once we found out who those top performing nursing homes were, especially in Arizona and Wisconsin where there was a payout, we went out and we talked to those nursing homes and said, what did you do um, to uh, uh, generate this reward payment? Improve performance or, or maintain absolute performance. The facilities generally told us we didn't do anything. We didn't um, uh, respond to the NHVVP. One rather humorous response we did get from one religious affiliated nursing home that ended up being one of the top performers is they said they lit a candle every night uh, in, in, in hopes of getting a payout. This obviously wasn't what we had in, in mind when we started evaluating the, the demonstration. So our results that if you change payment incentives but don't actually tie that to any sort of uh, delivery level change uh, actually doesn't improve performance fits with a broader economic literature that suggests incentives without education uh, or guidance in terms of working with providers is not likely to lead to success, especially in the context of very complicated tasks such as preventing a hospitalization or a pressure ulcer. There are economic uh, uh, papers looking at uh, student performance, you know, incentivizing teachers to improve student performance. That's a complicated task. How do you improve uh, 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 your teaching and ultimately get better test scores? There's an economic literature around uh, Chinese swimmers and trying to, uh, uh, they were incentivized to get more gold medals uh, at the Summer Olympics. Once again, that's a complicated task. How do you improve your, your swimming performance? Whether it's, whether it's swimming faster, getting your students to score better, or uh, preventing a pressure ulcer or a hospitalization. These are all complicated tasks, likely suggesting you can't just incentivize these tasks, you actually have to tie them to uh, behaviors that are known to um, result in better performance. So the bottom line here is that although payment reform is necessary, it's certainly not sufficient. And so if we go back to our two by two matrix, the punchline here is that you can't just incentivize better performance but not change kind of uh, delivery level um, uh, behaviors and vice versa as we learn with telemedicine and toolkits you can't just implement delivery level reforms without changing how we pay for services.